Hello, welcome to the pre-recording of the second meeting of the Graphics Programming Virtual Meetup. This meetup follows the Berlin Code of Conduct. The topic today is to go through the chapter 6 to 8 of the Retracing in When We Can book that we started last time. Last time we implemented uh, sphere intersection so we can have this nice sphere in the center of our scene even though they still miss all kinds of features and we will address some of them today. We will have four main goals today. One is to implement surface normals, which is, is a prerequisite for all kinds of shadings. And then we will extend our current hard-coded sphere into a scene that can handle multiple objects. Then we talk about anti-aliasing and finally diffuse materials. To get a surface normal for a sphere, it is really easy. We just subtract the center of the sphere from the hit point and then normalize the result vector. As a result, we will get a normal vector that always point outward of the sphere. Then for the hit sphere function, since we actually need to know where the hit point is, we need to calculate the root. And then and then for the for, for the ray color function, we just calculate the normal vector and then scale it into a color from 0 to 1 so we can visualize it easily like this then the book do some refactoring to the ray sphere intersection code instead of you calculating b it's just calculating half b before we can talk about a list that contain multiple objects, we need some representation of hitable objects because currently we just hard code the sphere into the scene. Uh, currently we only have one kind of hitable shapes to represent, which is sphere, but later we will have a lot of different kind of shapes. So we need some kind of dynamic polymorphism to represent this, this kind of stuff. And the book use inheritance to represent that. Inheritance is certainly not the only option for dynamic polymorphism. And in some other languages, you are certainly to use different techniques. For example, in Rust, you will probably use uh, Trade objects to represent this. In here, we use inheritance, and we have abstract class called hitable that contains a virtual function. Hit that takes array, takes a range of valid, uh, valid parameter for intersection, and then it either return false or return true and give us back a hit record. Each record itself is a struct containing all the information about the intersection, contain a point, uh, the hit point, the normal vector, and the parameter to array. Then our sphere is just inherited from the hit ball, and it is represented by a point and a radius as we said in the last episode. Then the re-sphere intersection function is largely the same as what we have before. But since we have this range, it's, uh, we can actually check if our intersection uh, root is valid or not. We first check if the smaller root if the smaller root is out of the range, for example, if, if the, that root is 
uh, negative, then we just discard that root. Otherwise, we just give, return true and give back this smaller root. And then we check the larger root in a similar fashion. At the end, if none of the two roots match the result, then we return false. One thing we haven't addressed yet is our normal vector point always point outward. However, if we have a reshoot it inside the triangle, the, uh, in, sorry, inside the sphere, then it will intersect with the sphere in, in the inner side. In that case, we should have a normal that points inward to the sphere. So we can use the dot product of the redirection and the outward normal we calculated before to get, get the and if the dot product is positive, then we then we know the ray is inside the sphere, so we have uh, we need to negate that normal to point inward. Also, we have a boolean parameter, uh, boolean variable to set explicitly about whether our face is front face or back face. We will use this information later when dealing with dielectric materials. Then we just have this helper function to set the face normal and that front face boolean variable and call it inside the ray sphere intersection. Sorry, I, I don't understand why I keep saying triangle even though I am talking about spheres. Then, I, then after all those infrastructures, we can finally have a hitable list that is represented by a vector of a pointer of hitables. We need pointers because inheritance. And when we actually do the a list uh, intersection test, we just loop through all the objects inside the list and to find the closest hit. Because we need to loop through all the objects one by one, this process can be quite expensive when we have a lot of objects. That is a problem that we will address later with accelerating data structures. And finally, we can use that hitable list to add multiple spheres. The first sphere is the same sphere at the center of screen that we had before. And the second sphere is a very large sphere below us that we use as a ground. So as a result, we will have one sphere at the center of screen and another sphere as a ground. Now let's talk about anti-aliasing. Notice for the borders of an object, you can see all those sharp edges here. That is because we only have one sample per pixel. And the easiest way of dealing with this situation is to have multiple samples per pixel and then average the result. So, this is, called, uh, this is called super sampling, and we will use the simplest form of super sampling where we sample uniformly inside this uh, pixel. Later, uh, in later uh, we, the third book, we will talk about some smarter strategies of how to do the sampling. And because we need some uh, Sample it uniformly. We need some random number generator, and the book had a utility for get a random number. What we what we will do is quite simple. We sample multiple points inside the pixel, 
we use the algorithm we already had to calculate the color for every sample, and then we average the color as a result. The other thing nice to have is a camera class where it stores uh, different origins uh, and other, uh, other things as uh, data. So this way we can actually configure it our camera. Then what we do is to have a high sample per pixel rate and inside uh, for every pixel, we loop, through, loop uh, that many times and do the render sampling inside this pixel and then do our re-object uh, re intersection test on that sample and accumulate the result. Then finally, when we write a color, we simply just average the result back. Then we will have this nice anti-aliased smooth thing. The last thing we want to talk about is the diffuse material. The idea of diffuse material is it's when a, right, a light comes in and intersects with the surface, it bounces off randomly. We, we represent this kind of, this kind of uh, totally rough reflection by Lambertian reflection. So the book, the book actually gives three different uh, bidirectional uh, uh, distribution function, but two of them are wrong. One is run in a subtle way, and the other is totally wrong. The book just want to show us that it is hard to get the distribution right. But I will skip those and only talk about the correct one. So the correct one is randomly find a point in the spherical coordinate and then just transform it back into the Cartesian coordinate. Other thing we need to have is some limitation on the number of uh, recursion depths because, because if Considering if a ray just bounces around forever, then that can cause a stack overflow. So we need some kind of recursive depth to solve this problem. And 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 then we just use the. Uh, we just use the uh, use this fact, and for each recursion, we might uh, we subtract depths by one to get a result. And also, we use our random unit vector function before to actually get uh, Lambertian reflection. As a result, we have this picture, which looks quite right because it is too dark. This is this reason is because we haven't done any gamma correction. So there are two kind of color space we care about. The linear color space is where we should do all our lighting calculation in. However, all the images are displaced in a non-linear color space to store more information and for adaptive to our human eyes because we can distinct dark, darker light better than and 
we usually call that color space as RGB and the way to convert from the linear color space to uh, the gamma color space is to do uh, gamma correction and the gamma color space is sRGB nonlinear space I talked about where we just write an exponent in usually the exponential is 2.2 .2, but in this book it's just use uh, roughly 2 as exponent because then we can use square root then that's a bit easier as a result we get a gamma corrected image which is way lighter and one thing we haven't talked about is we cannot use zero when we do the ray word intersection the reason is because if we use zero then because of floating point error we can get some self intersection this uh, this artifact is not that obvious in our path tracer uh, because we don't use shadow rays but for uh weighted ray tracing or other ray, trac ray tracers that use shadow rays this can cause really horrible artifact so the fix is we add some small numbers small displacement towards our when we do re object intersection this way uh, we can exclude the floating point error thank you